So, uh, and, and also, when I was thinking about it, I really think that I could uh, call my nerves being up here, imagining you as transformers in, in the people there. I could select different transformers for you. And I think Don would be the XML sample generator, something like that. Dale, probably the creator or something. Uh, I have a colleague from Stockholm, Gabriel. I would think he would be the Revit reader because he's brilliant at Revit and so on. Uh, probably on my own, I would be the convex hole accumulator if you get that one in there. So uh, let's start. That worked great. Uh, that was the blank button. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the, the, this is me, if you can see that picture. I was about 10, 11 years, and it's a very rare picture of my mother told me because I was very rarely out in the sun during the summer because I spent most of my time in a little house like that. That was in our summer house. We had this little house outside. And what was I doing? Well, I was spending a lot of time with my best friend, uh, the, the VIC20, a massive, massively competent home computer with 3.5 kilobytes of RAM. Enough to play games. This, this was the Blitz game. It was very, very entertaining. I played a lot of with that one. And then I moved on, you got better computer. This was the Amiga, the Elite, which is now out in a new version on Kickstarter. I can truly re recommend that one. Uh, we had the Lemmings for uh, uh, Amiga and so on it went. It turns out, I did some calculations here, that I have about 30,000 hours of gaming experience. Uh, I know this stuff, apparently. I spent about, probably I spent as much time uh, removing the copy protection on the games. Uh, th so this is a very long time ago, so I can, I can say that. So, um, hopefully this is good news for you who have kids who play a lot, that uh, kids don't necessarily turn into zombies if they play. Uh, a lot of video games, wi which is stated here, state-of-the-art state state research here. And uh, good to know, because we were talking about zombies previously. And you may might turn out uh, to a total FME geek instead. So it's not necessarily a bad thing playing a lot of computer games. So I, I will get to FME sooner or later in, in this one, I hope. Uh, the tagline here is much about connect, transforming, and uh, automating. And uh, of course, when we think about this, we think about data, we think about systems, and so on. But, but for me, it really is about connecting, transforming, and also automating ideas. That, that is pretty much what we do. So if we, we want to try something out, we have an idea how it could work. FME is really a brilliant tool for that. And there is a guy called Steve Johnson who wrote in, in a book and also in a presentation where good ideas come from that really the most groundbreaking and good ideas come from combining something that really exists. Something good that exists and you can combine those things and something even better comes out. So uh, this is the idea of combiner. And, and, and the next slide, I was a bit um, scared of showing that, but uh, uh, Paul Ramsey said that data is liquid. So really, if we pour something into this idea combiner, like we try some ingredients, the beer, margarita, and the garlic, something comes out, and the beerita must be the absolute best invention ever because we try to combine something really brilliant. And that one, let's see, that one really exists in Texas, I learned, for those who couldn't decide. Uh, so if you couldn't decide between the bar margarita and the, the beer, you can have a beerita. So uh, all of this Minecraft starts pretty much started not with the beerita, but with thinking about uh, map data and gaming in the same way. If I could combine this, I would hopefully turn out like a cool diet to my 14-year-old teenager. And being cool for a 14-year-old teenager is virtually impossible, as you know. So that's how it started. And I know that uh, there are a lot of other people who have started with getting geodata into Minecraft, and it started pretty much the same way. You cooperate with your kids or get inspired by that. I think there is a guy from the Norwegian mapping agency, uh, Mr. Kripus, who did a very nice uh, map of the Norwegian 
uh, mountains or something. He might even be here. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, it's probably the same thing. I can imagine you were inspired by your kids here. So uh, this is how it started. So I, I started fiddling with this with, together with a colleague called Peter Segerstedt, who is a really good Python man. He's really good at FME. And we, we did some experiments, but, it, well, it was a bit of clunky when we worked out this. So it kind of, it was put on hold for a while. It, this was just experimenting. Then uh, one day I was at something called the Coder Dojo. The, the Coder Dojo is something very very brilliant. I, it's a concept all over the world to get kids interested in programming. And they kind of lure the kids in there by uh, telling them that they will learn how to modify and code Minecraft and other games in other uh, programming environments. So I went there with my son. And when they turned off the lights and uh, I was the only kid left, uh, I, I was still far from a cool dad. In, in that moment. But uh, then I realized when we, when we looked at how they could modify the, the gaming environment for Minecraft, uh, there are server compo components. And then I got this idea that maybe we can get data into Minecraft. Uh, how many have played Minecraft or have kids playing Minecraft? Uh, it's quite easy. It's, it's like a Lego game, we could say that when, when you're playing there. So I started experimenting there, and it was really, then I realized that we don't need much code at all to get this working, because on the web, uh, the server side of the game, there is possible to connect to web services. So I really tried quite easily to set up uh, FME server streaming, JSON data, not XML, but that's okay, I think JSON still, XML's little brother, uh, streaming, points to the server, the gaming server, and uh, this really worked very well. I think it was seven lines of code on, on the actual server. The FME workbench was a little bit more complex, uh, but not super complex. So this below there is a Minecraft selfie of, of my own. I put there as an orthophoto. And also trying with some OpenStreetMap data, putting that as a map in there, and then you could build along the footprints. And um, this is the great thing with, F uh, with FME. If you have something working, you can pretty much get anything through that workflow. So this is I IFC data and also Google Earth stuff, stuff, KML there. And then one day, last summer, I was contacted by the Swedish Center for Architecture and Design, who had heard this, uh, that they had a way of doing this, and they asked me, can you put the entire Stockholm into Minecraft? And as I'm a pathological Jess sayer, uh, I said yes. Uh, I, I kind of regretted that, because if you do some calculations, streaming billions and billions of 3D data through JSON, it takes a while doing that. But hey, uh, it was a good challenge. And really what they wanted to do is they wanted an exact replica of Stockholm as a ground for people to build new buildings on. So we got the topography, the hydrography, the properties in there, but we left the buildings there. And also uh, we set up uh, something by by the help of postgis in the background. We loaded postgis with the properties, the borders in there. So when people logged into this Minecraft virtual world and started building, they were only allowed to build on a property where they got the permit. And this was automatic. And uh, we loaded postgis by that, and we set up uh, a small little Java plugin on the other side. So I'm going to try to show if the technology is with us. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so, so this is how it looks when you have logged into the Minecraft world. And now I'm, I am the Swaco user, so um, uh, I am close to my spot. I, of course, got the, the Swaco property here. And that house we see there, which is all bricky, it comes from a Google Earth uh, or a KMZ model, which has been imported with FME. So when I land on the ground here, you can see that I tried to place a block here along the road. But as I'm not inside my property, I'm outside the property borders, when I hit the ground here, PostGIS is asked, am I allowed to build here? And if I'm not, the block is removed. 
So um, if I soon move into the property, okay, now I'm inside, now I'm allowed to build. So here I could start building something or changing something. So I will build a small brick wall and put up a sign. So, and you need this, uh, this kind of user control but because the first thing that happens if you put a game up, a server like this up for kids, they will try to blow stuff up. And uh, that, that, that's, that's really true because it's fun, of course, uh, and doing that. But it also was an idea for the center of architecture design that they really wanted to see how the city evolved with the same rules for buildings. So, and this really happened in, in Denmark who released the, uh, the entire nation in Minecraft recently and, and it blew up. And, and this is the result from, from, um, from the Blockholm experiment. All the buildings you see here were built by kids or, or even grown-up people who logged into this game and created all these uh, interesting buildings. And it, was, it didn't take many hours until thousands of buildings were built. It, it really was uh, amazing to see how fast that was. And now the people here are speaking Swedish, so I won't even bother trying to translate in real time. Uh, but they, they are talking about the important of importance of how it should be easy to build in here. And Micro fits perfectly that because the blocks are it's pretty coarse and it's fast to build in here. And even if you want to see more of these examples of what came out of this uh, experiment, you can go into YouTube and you can Google Minecraft and Blockholm and then we would see movies like this that kids have built um, different houses and creators and they record these movies and put them up there how they look, want houses to look like. And uh, the Feast Street, this is an interesting place to go, I think. I think the next one are called the Tetris houses in there. So how are we on time? Can you see that? Okay, it's good. Would you like to live in a house like that? That's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, there were a lot of houses being built quite fast. Let's see if we can pause that one. So what happened after that? Well, and this is what was the really cool thing is there was a jury at this design center who looked at this virtually created world and decided what are the most interesting buildings? And they printed scale models of this in the scale one to five, and they made an exhibition in Stockholm of this. So you can uh, walk around in a scale models of these creations there. So that's, that's me up there. And at that point, as I had my son with me, then, then at that point I was a pretty cool dad <laughs> running around in, in Minecraft. It didn't last very long, I can say, <laughs> the coolness. There, but uh, that was a really fun experience, and and it was so great to be able to tell my mother that all these thirty thousand hours of gaming came came to use in my, in my work. So, looking at other projects related to crowdsourcing and so on, this is a municipality in Denmark, and uh, called Viborg. Viborg. And they have a very interesting design townhouse. And it's, I think it's quite similar to this building, <laughs> really, the, the design here. So what we try to do there is to set up a Minecraft world, uh, not only on the outside. We even try to import the BIM data. So this is Minecraft, but with really the 3D data from the inside using real BIM. And this will be combined together with the outdoor state on Minecraft. So it will kind of move around this world, being it will be possible to go inside and go out from the buildings. And lastly, I got these pictures from um, a guy who contacted me from Colorado. 
some months ago. And these, oh, it's hard to read there, but it's the Foothill Minecraft Geodesign Challenge in Colorado. And these are really, it's about 50 or almost approaching 100 elementary school kids who are discussing this challenge so who that have been set up. And what they are going to do is to experiment with Minecraft. And what we have helped them with is to set up a small FME workspace that moves LiDAR data into a Minecraft world. And, and the LiDAR data is only roughly classified if, if it's vegetation or not. So let's see if we have a picture like this. So uh, up to the left, uh, left is looking at the uh, LIS file, a last file, and down to the right is how it looks in Minecraft when we have just put this raw data into Minecraft. And what these kids are trying to do is to go out in the real world and will classify this data. So if this point in here is a brick in the LiDAR data, well they will simply put a brick block from Minecraft at that position. So they will really do a crowdsourcing LiDAR data classification with this one, which I think is a really cool concept. I don't know how it will turn out, but we were very glad that we could help with a little experiment like this. So uh, if you think about uh, the future here and what will happen is, um, we can only say that you ain't seen nothing yet, is my theory. Because how many use OpenStreetMap? Do that in here. So how many have edited something in OpenStreetMap and uh, uploaded that? that? It's quite a few people. I, I looked it up, and it seems like it's about between 1.5 million and 2 million users really updating OpenStreetMap data. And that's, that's quite a lot of users. But in Minecraft, it's approaching 50 million users playing this one. And that's only one game. So if we look at all these gaming environments, out there, you can really feel what kind of power there is to leverage these user if users if they really want to build something. And there, you can really say that there is a role for FME in this one, both getting data in there, but absolutely to get data out of that. So thank you very much.